तो नहीं आते लेकिन प्लीज बेर विथ मी आई एम लिटिल स्पीच क्योंकि कल मेरा टाइम मैंने दे दिया था तो आज जरा एक कंक्लूजन की बात करेंगे इंग्लिश में लिखा है सॉरी बीच में याद रहा तो ट्रांसलेशन करूंगी नहीं तो कोई भी लंच टाइम पे मेरे साथ आके प्लीज बात कर सकते हैं सो so, नमस्ते एवरीवन एंड माय गॉड वाओ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल कैन बी ऑल क्लैप फॉर ऑल ऑफ दिस इट वाज फिनोमेनल व्हाट एन एक्सिलरेटिंग वन एंड अ हाफ डेज ऑफ प्रेजेंटेशंस कन्वर्सेशंस द इग्नाइटिंग ऑफ आइडियाज द शेयरिंग ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस एंड द एयरिंग ऑफ आवर होप्स एंड फियर्स एज़ वेल दैट टू इन अ प्लेस कॉल्ड इफ बी व्हिच रिमाइंड्स अस दैट इफ we can converge in our ideals and our approaches we can be successful in our societal vision this gathering has been a melange of people and organizations that work in the gender space with men women and other genders a gathering of practitioners and donors academics and artists like yesterday evening and of diverse people all passionately interested in this very human project of together building a more gender equitable world and more importantly i think a compassionate empathetic society that is both empowered and co-powered i think the word co-powered to me has become in interesting because i first used it at a similar conference virtually um during our conversations to create the better future that we all crave so big thank you to all of you for coming here for sharing for helping build together this field of gender equity rmp does have a very special focus on young men and boys but really that is only for the goal of universal equity and agency and that this is only one pathway to that goal and something that we see as a root cause that needs to be addressed and i am really humbled and delighted to see so many organizations that work with women present here in this room because 6 years ago when i made a naive and uh, passionate speech on the need to work with young men and boys i thought maybe i had burnt some bridges at a conference called bridges because <laughs> many of the feminists in the room perhaps rightfully so were worried that i representing what i represent may be causing a shift away from the work of women's empowerment but of course that was not at all what i had in mind i was merely expressing my concern that if we overlook the needs of half of humanity we may be missing something crucial in the big picture and exactly for the women whom we want to empower and i think recent events not just in india but worldwide do confirm that there is indeed a huge backlash from in increasingly insecure males of all political and religious views and all of us in this room i do believe must pay keen attention to why that is happening because our work is to design a non judgmental highly creative response to this emergence not just in our programmatic work but i believe from within each one of us first in our homes in our social groups and indeed in the broader samaj that is the work ahead and as rajni bakshi my friend said yesterday we should not forget ever how much has already been achieved see you can never lock up an idea that has already been liberated it is impossible yes powers that be will try to push women back or transgenders back in the us in iran in afghanistan and here also but i really think as i was watching the arabian sea this morning this is like waves on the sea in high tide okay as these waves recede after high tide after the high tide you can see the ocean of possibilities underneath and gender fluidity and gender equity i believe are now in the body of the ocean so no matter the shape shifts of the ebbs and flows so let us all make this belief and this hope a habit hope can be a habit it is a muscle to be built because hope is the positive energy that drives our work together and as i keep saying and we saw just now we have to be particularly optimistic in a country as young as ours because history tells us very clearly how idealistic youth are how energetic and how determined to make their own futures young people always innovate always find new ways to meet old goals 
And I can really see that in this group and in this room. So a shout out to the idealism, energy, and optimism to the youth of this room, especially the ones who are here a few minutes ago. from you. But I picked up so many ideas and thoughts from all of you since yesterday. One clear message was that we cannot lump all men together. And that was said repeatedly. There are vast power imbalances among men due to caste, due to religion, due to geography, due to income and more. So we need more qualitative, thoughtful, maybe ethnographic research to understand both the lived realities and the pathways forward. I couldn't agree more. I must say that again, I couldn't agree more. We have to put this subject right in the middle of the room. But as some of us were discussing yesterday, I wonder, can we create new opportunities from this understanding? Can we, as we acknowledge, as we empathize with the harsh conditions in the lives of Dalit or other minority men, can we work alongside with them to reimagine their use of power in their horizontal groups or with the women they live among. And I know that many of you are engaged in exactly this practice. Because if this whole mission is really about reimagined power structures, not simply about replacing one oppressed people, set of oppressed people with another set of oppressive people, then this kind of creative work becomes increasingly important, however difficult it may be. So all I can say, because I am no expert in this, and all of you have thought about this, far longer than I have. Let's keep these questions and debates alive in all our gatherings going forward as to what are the creative possibilities given the structural issues that are so clearly visible outside. Another thread I picked up yesterday was on funding anxiety. It is really hard to find donors in this gender space. There are a lot of international donors, but with what's happening with FCRA, etc. Now we have to open our eyes to the reality here. And while we and my wonderful team will do our bit to expand the donor community, and I again call out with gratitude the number of donor organizations represented here. Thank you for coming. I also want all of us to commit to telling our stories better. Okay? We need to build stronger bridges to the islands inhabited by the donor community. Good stories, and I think these two young men will agree with me. Good stories are the bricks by which these bridges are going to be built. And we cannot expect donors to fund us because we are really doing good societal work, which is true. So we must draw donors to us by the power of our stories, by good analysis of the impact we are making, and by our keen understanding of how this problem affects them and their interests as well. That is the work ahead. And as I've been writing and saying for a while now, we are all interconnected. The elite, the poor, and the ones in between. Some of us are on the upper deck in private cabins also. Some are in the lower decks. Some are right at the bottom of the boat shoveling coal. But we are all on the same Titanic together. And we must all work to steer it away from the iceberg, or we all perish. No one can succeed from this task. And so there lies the opportunity for us. There lies the opportunity to share this story and to reel in some of the big local donor fish. Donors, I hope you're going to come closer to the bait. And don't worry, donors, we always release the catch. <laughs> now, speaking of stories, I watched this Hindi serial, which is currently the most popular Hindi serial in the country, TV serial, okay? Millions of people watch it every day, including many, many men, apparently some very surreptitiously. They used to look at Playboy magazine or something. Uh, I read that in an article. And now this serial is called Anupama, and it is on Disney Hotstar. How many of you watch it? How many of you know of it? No of it. But how many of you watch it? Okay. We are in a small minority. We should start our own club at lunchtime. But I watch it partly to educate myself about the kind of programming in Hindi, because I occupy such an English word despite uh, uh, the many languages I know, partly to keep my Hindi current, 
And partly because nobody in India can really resist extremely high melodrama. Okay? <laughs> it's very hard to resist once you get into it. But the point of bringing up Anupama is that its storyline confuses me a lot at times. Sometimes its ideas are boldly progressive, sometimes confusingly regressive. But maybe I thought that just reflects the state of our society. Many ideas, many centuries, many streams are lived in simultaneously in this Bharat India of ours. And there's good and bad in all of us, it looks like, and our stories continuously try to depict those gray areas and those nuances. So maybe we should thrive in this diversity, in this confusion, until the clear streams of reason emerge. And they do emerge, as we have seen in our history. The good news is that all those ideas, all those viewpoints are passionately aired in this serial. And there too, I believe, the arc of the history of its story seems to be bending towards justice. So I would say more powers to good stories, and may we all learn to tell our powerful stories more powerfully. Which reminds me of another thing that we have been talking about at this conference. We must remember that there are many, 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 many good men in the world who have silently worked on themselves and with the women in their lives to balance power better. Again, that was something that was just talked about in Men Ki Baat. And again, in the spirit of inclusion, in the spirit of not generalizing, of not lumping men together, let us acknowledge, celebrate, ally with, and work with the men who are on this journey. Because many of them are also in this room. So shout out and a call out to all the men in this room. found out in the extensive research done by our communication partners, Cracker and Raj. We have put out some stuff outside. Do look at it carefully. Apparently, many young people now celebrate and ideal, idolize a new kind of male. Shah Rukh over Salman Khan and Ayushman Kurana today. That gives me great hope because it represents new norm formations, new sensitivities, new aspirations, as well as newfound comfort in a more caring, less aggressive, less overconfident maleness. And as we heard in Men Ki Baat, Gen Z seems to believe in women's rights, but they need embodiments of this sentiment. And so yay to actors and actor humans <laughs> like Ayushman, Ranveer, Ranveer, and all the other ones whom I don't even know because I'm too old. But uh, hats off to all of them. And now as I come to a close, I want to point out again, as I did yesterday, how many senior leaders and established organizations there are in this room. From Mawa and Harish to Abhijit and CHSJ to Sujata and Koro and so many more. Sorry for missing out some of your names. Among our many partner portfolios, because RNP works in many areas, as some of you know, this is the one where all the organizations already have a lot of experience of working together. And that is fantastic. So while we promise to support the convenings going forward, we urge you all to take the leadership to continue to broaden and deepen these meetings, to give them a rhythm and a cadence so that more and more meaningful work can happen and scale, more bonds of trust can be woven, and this becomes a true, inclusive, and strong movement for gender equity and reimagined power relationships. We still have a long way to go to together create the grammar, the accessible language the stories, as I said, and the many more approaches we need to make this societal mission a reality. So let's continue to build, but build together. At RNP, we feel we have come a long way from where we could only partner one organization, ECF, to get this portfolio up and running. Now look at this room full of so many possibilities. Once again, I thank you all, and I say a heartfelt thank you to my great team at RNP in this case. especially after COVID, as so many people said, just being in a room full of enthusiastic, like-minded, like-minded in the sense we, there are many divergences in the way we think, but like-minded in the sense that the broadest humanistic goals we are, all of us share in common. And that is that satsang has been very important to me. Um, looking ahead, we are committed to this journey for sure. But you'll be hearing more of this, and you'll also know that we're renaming this portfolio. Because it was getting, to be honest, a little awkward to keep saying how interested we all are in young men and boys. <laughs> okay? And I kid you not.
thought sometimes when I was having these conversations on my phone, so we all know what algorithms run on these things. After my conversations with my colleagues, I used to get ads for dating services. So I thought it is time to give this portfolio a slightly more decent name. So the brilliant work done by our agency, we thought about this a lot, we have converged on the word liar. We like it because liar means worthy. And one of the strong aspirations young males have been expressing in our research over the few years, some of which is done by you, is that they want to be liar. Liar means worthy for themselves, for their loved ones, and for society at large. The word liar has been so much imbued in their lives, and there must be other words in other languages that men also will forget, have had to listen to tuto nalayak hai. So the idea of becoming liar is such a powerful inspiration that we decided to call the portfolio liar. And for me, that also, that word also holds us all responsible to ourselves, to make ourselves liar to the task ahead. And we look forward to your response, your participation, and your collaboration in this. So please enjoy the rest of the meeting, the lunch, the film. Safe journeys home. See you all again. And hope is our Hope is our muscle, hope is our faith, hope is our duty, and let us all be hopeful together. Namaste and Dhaniwa. The role of what the fathers were doing did not influence the hegemonic masculinity that was displayed in that group. And the single most important correlation they could find was that of the peer group and that of friends.